Hello everyone. This is the second part of composite function. In first part, we studied about basics of composite function. So link is available in description. And uh, if you already studied that, let's proceed to the second part. So in this part, we will learn how to find domain and range of composite function. Suppose there are two function, f x and g x, and we need to find the domain of g of f x. We can also write it as g of f x. Okay, so we need to find the domain of g of f x. So how we will find? And let us understand with the diagram it. And suppose this is the a, b, c, and c set, and uh, here it is x, and this function is f, and this function is g. So from x we will put value of x in f, then it will become f x. And when we will put f x values in g, then it will become g of f x. Okay, so this is our this is our composite function. So see, for finding the domain of g of f x, we need two values. X should be belongs to f. X should be belongs to domain of f. And the second is f x should be belongs to domain of g. f x should be belongs to domain of g as you can see in the figure and then and this both condition should be satisfied so we will take intersection of both first we will find this and this then we will, in last we will take the intersection of both that will be our domain for g of fx similarly let's see for the f of gx we can also write it as f of gx so same figure we will draw but see here x will come first then g then f so x then this is g function and this is f so when i will put x values of x and g then it will become g of x and then when we i will put g x in f then it will become f of gx so this is our composite function x to f of gx so how will you find the domain of this function so for this x should be belongs to domain of g then only gx will be defined so x should be belongs to domain of g and gx should be belongs to domain of f gx should be belongs to domain of f and in last we will take intersection of both so this is the process of finding domain for f f of gx and g of fx okay let's see the question on it so this is our first problem and in this problem fx is given as minus 1 plus modulus of x minus 2 and gx is 2 minus modulus of x and here x is from 0 to 4 and here x is from minus 1 to 3 so this is the domain of this is the domain of function f and this is the domain of function g and what we need to find is find domain and range of f of gx so how we will find see for again we will know that x then g this is our g and this is f so we know that for that x first condition is x should be belongs to domain of g and the second is gx should be belongs to domain of f these two condition we need to find so first x is belongs to domain of g so what is the domain of g it is minus 1 to 3 so from this we got x should be belongs to minus 1 to 3 here equal sign is there so i took close bracket okay the next is gx should be belongs to domain of f gx should be belongs to domain of f so what is the gx the gx is our 2 minus mode of x so 2 minus modulus of x is our gx it should be belongs to uh, domain of f so domain of f is 0 to 4 okay let's find out the x in this case so 2 minus modulus of x should be greater than equals to 0 and less than equals to 4 i'm taking 2 to this side so it will come minus 2 and 4 minus 2 that will be 2 and sorry minus sign is there so if i remove the minus sign the equality will become like this change but both side 2 is there so it will not affect 2 okay now we know that modulus function 
least value is zero, so it will come like this. Greater than equals to zero, less than equals to two, or also we can write x is belongs to minus two to two. So we got x belongs to minus two to two from this case, and in this case we got x minus one to one. Now we will take the intersection from both the case. Okay. X belongs to minus two to two. Now we will take the intersection from the both the cases. So this is zero, and the first case minus one to three, minus one to less. This is three. So minus one to three, and in the second case minus two to two. So minus two will be here, and two will be here. So in second case minus two to two. Okay, the intersection part is this. Which is minus one to two between minus one to two, the common part. So x belongs to minus one to two is the domain for this f f of g x. Okay, and let's find out the range. So first we will find the f of g x. F of g x. How we will find? And in place of x. In place of x in f x, we will put the g x. So f of g x is our two minus modulus of x. Okay. Now, what is f x minus one plus modulus of x minus two? So what we will do minus one plus modulus of x minus two. So x minus two is two minus modulus of x. In place of x, we will put two minus mod of x. Minus two. Okay. Now we'll solve this. So see, two two will be cancel out, and it will come minus one plus mod of mod minus x. Okay. So see, this will come positive, and it will become negative. Again, it will come positive. So also we can write it like minus one plus modulus of x. Okay. This is the this is our f of g x, and we know that domain is our x belongs to minus one to two. We find out. It just before. Okay, now we'll find the range of this function. See how we'll find. See, x belongs to minus one to two. Okay, from this, so mod x will be from zero to two. Then minus one plus mod x. So minus one plus mod x will be from minus one. And one, okay. So this is our range, and this function is our f of g x. So f of g x will be from minus one to one. So this is our range of the function, and this is our domain of the function. So like this, we will find the dom range and domain of the function. Let's proceed to second question. Okay, let's solve the second problem. So in this problem, function f is defined from positive real number to real number. And f x is our e raised to power x, and uh, function g x is defined from minus one to one and two minus pi by two to pi by two, and g x is sine inverse x. Okay, and we need to find the domain range of f of g x and g of f x. So let's find first for f of g x. Okay, so first find the f of g. We, we can also write it like this. So f of g x will be what? G x is our sine inverse x. Okay. And what we will do? We will replace x from f x by sine inverse x. So it will become sine inverse x. So this is our f of g x. And we need to find the domain. So what will be the domain of this? So for domain of this, x should be belongs to domain of g, and g x should be belongs to domain of f. These two we need to find. Then we will take the intersection. So from this we got. X should be belongs to domain of G. What is the domain of G? Minus one to one. So from this we get X belongs to minus one to one. Now let's solve this second one. In this second, G X is what? Sine inverse X. And sine inverse X should be belongs to what? Domain of F. Domain of F is positive real number. So positive real means X should be greater than zero, zero to infinity. Okay. So suppose we will write it like this: sine inverse X. Greater than zero, less than infinity. You know, maximum value of sine inverse x is pi by two, and so we will we can write it like sine inverse x 
less than equals to pi by 2. So x is our sin 0 and sin pi by 2. So x will be our sin 0 is 0, sorry, equal sign will not be there and x sin pi by 2 is 1. So we got x belongs to 0 to 1 from this second by solving this second one. Now we will take intersection of this and this. So you can see in this x is from minus 1 to 1 and in this x is 0 to 1. So this is the subset of this. So we can write domain is x belongs to 0 to 1 after taking the intersection from this and this. So this is our domain of f of gx. Now let's find the range. For range function we have f of gx is our e raised to sorry e raised to sin inverse x and this is the increasing this is the increasing function as we know so if x according to domain x is belongs to 0 to 1 so sin x sin inverse x will be from 0 to pi by 2 because sin inverse 1 is pi by 2 so now we will take e so e raised to power 0 will be 1 and e raised to power pi by 2 will be e raised to power pi by 2. So this is our range of f of gx. So f of gx will be belongs to 1 to e raised to power pi by 2. So this is the range of f of gx. Okay. So let's solve it for g of fx now. So g of fx will be our g fx is our e raised to power x. So in place of x we will replace e raised to power x in sin Okay So now let's find the domain of g of fx So how we will find First we will x should be belongs to domain of f And second fx should be belongs to domain of g These two we need to find From this we got x belongs to domain of f So domain of f is 0 to infinity So x belongs to 0 to infinity. R positive means greater than 0. 0 to infinity. Now we will find fx belongs to domain of g. So what is our fx? fx is our e raised to power x. So e raised to power belongs to domain of g is minus 1 to 1. Let's solve this. So e raised to power x greater than equals to minus 1 less than equals to 1. So we know that e raised to power x is always greater than 0. So we can write it 0 to sorry. It will not be 0. 1. Let's take log both sides. So ln 0 x ln 1. Okay. And ln 0 is minus infinity. x ln 1 is 0. So from this we got x belongs to minus infinity to 0. So one solution is this and other is this. We need to take the intersection of both. So we can see that if it is 0, this is minus infinity, this is infinity. First solution is 0 to infinity. So 0 is not included so 0 to infinity and second solution is minus infinity to 0 so this is the second solution so we can see that there is no value as an intersection so x belongs to 5 there is no domain for this function so g of fx will not be exist ok and f of gx for f of gx this is the domain and this is the range ok let's proceed to our last problem Okay, this is our last problem for today and in this problem uh, again f is defined from positive real number to real number and fx is ln x and g is defined from real number to real number gx is our greatest integer of x then find the again f of gx and g of fx so first let's find the f of gx so what will be f of gx f of gx is our greatest integer of x so we will put ln greatest integer of x now let's find the domain of f of gx so first we will find x belongs to domain of g and second we will find gx belongs to domain of f so x belongs to domain of g means domain of g is real number so x belongs to r and gx belongs to domain of f so domain of f is what r plus so gx is our greatest integer of x belongs to positive real number so that means 0 to infinity ok and uh, you know that greatest integer should be greater than 0 that means number should be greater than 1 
if it is greater than 0 to infinity so the greatest integer should be minimum 1 so x should be greater than 1 so x will be greater than 1 infinity. x belongs to 1 to infinity from this we got 1 to infinity and from x belongs to r if we will take intersection of both then we will get this part only because in this all it numbers are included so we will get 1 to infinity so this is the domain of f of gx okay let's find the range let's find the range of function so function is our ln greatest integer of x we know that x is belongs to 1 to infinity so greatest integer of x will be from 1 greatest integer of 1 will be 1 greatest sorry so greatest integer will be in greatest integer all integer values will come 1 2 3 up to infinity like this values will come okay and if if i talk about ln greatest integer then it will be ln 1 ln 2 ln 3 like this will come okay so this is the f of gx so this is the range of our function so this is our domain for f of gx and this is our range for f of gx and uh, now let's solve for the g of fx okay so for g of fx we will write g of fx will be what g of fx is our ln x so we can write it get h integer of ln x now let's find the domain so x should be belongs to domain of f and uh, fx should be belongs to domain of g so x belongs to domain of f domain of f is r positive and uh, so we'll get x belongs to 0 to infinity okay and uh, do fx should be belongs to domain of g what is fx ln x and domain of g is real number x belongs to r okay and if you will solve this in ln x x should be always greater than 0 so from by solving this we will get x belongs to 0 to infinity okay let's take the intersection of both so intersection of both will be same because both are same so domain is domain of gx is x belongs to 0 to infinity okay now let's find out the range so we know that g of fx is a, greatest integer of ln x and x is belongs to 0 to infinity x is belongs to 0 to infinity so ln x will be from minus infinity to infinity because ln 0 is minus infinity ln, ln infinity is infinity okay so greatest integer of ln x will be what all integers number all integers number because minus infinity to infinity is there so every time it will come integers so it will be all integers so we can also write it z plus and z minus okay so this is the answer this is the domain and this is the range of the this function okay the all problems we solved yet were the single single definition function because all have all were having single definitions okay so there is a problem for you as a and here is a problem with multiple definition function fx is also having two definitions and gx is also having two definition so this is your homework you try by yourself and in the next video we will see how to solve these type of problems thank you